Okay, so welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to apologize uh, for those that care that um, I've been away for quite a while. I didn't realize it had been two months since I recorded my last video. And, you know, the sound that you're hearing, I'm actually getting ready for work. I actually tried to record, I recorded this video yesterday, but when I went back to do the playback, my audio didn't record. So, that's like, you know what, let me go ahead and do this while I'm getting myself ready for work. So here we go. But the reason I've been away, classes, uh, dealing with some health stuff, um, joined the gym, trying to get some, trying to get some things under control, but like I said, I didn't realize it'd been so long. So, but I have been watching shows, and if you were interested in me going back to review, um, the shows that I started but never finished, then let me know and I'll, I'll definitely do that. But, um, like I said, I am an avid Netflix watcher, if you haven't noticed, and, um, I came across a show called the umbrella academy i believe it was i watched it i watched the entire series over a month ago so this is basically me trying to remember <laughs> trying to remember as much as i can to kind of do a summary of the first season so if you look at the my the, uh, the actual thumbnail in the, in the video um there's actually it's only six of the children depicted but there's actually seven um, and these are, the reason it's only the six that you see is because these are the only six that are kind of always present in the actual episode, in every episode. So, the first photo is Tom. And I'm going to relate it, it's more of a, uh, like a X-Men League of Legends kind of situation. And I'm going to explain to you why I make the comparison. So Tom would be like the Cyclops of the group. He's the leader. He's very um, duty-driven. You know, so um, the next one is I am number five, and he's like uh, what's his name, Nightcrawler. He's a mix between Nightcrawler and Hayden Christensen character in like the ju Jumper, but I can't remember Hayden Christensen's character name in the Jumper, so we're gonna do that. Um, uh, Vanya is kind of the odd person out. She doesn't have any ability to speak of, and so she's kind of kind of left on the sidelines a lot. And so she feels left out. Um, Klaus is a character. He, unfortunately, he does have a drug addiction, and but he can actually talk to the dead. I don't know if it's like he can go to the underworld, or he can summon the dead and talk to them. He had, his ability is kind of, uh, um, kind of a mystery to me. Um, the next person is Allison. Allison has the ability to, like I said, now this is where both the women in the show have like a Jean Grey-esque quality to them. So she can control behaviors and thoughts, um, but she's not like, she can't use telekinesis or she doesn't have any telepathy, that kind of power. She actually has to be, from what I've seen in the show, in close proximity to you and she actually has to verbally say it. So something about her voice that kind of puts the person in like a trance-like state or some kind of hypnotic state where she can suggest things to them and they, you know, they don't have any choice but to uh, comply. Um, and the last person you see is Diego. Diego is very much a Wolverine-esque character, right? He's very quick, he's really good with knives, and he's very angry and aggressive. <laughs> okay, so, um, like with family, so these they they were all brought together as babies. This one man, he adopted all of them because of their abilities, and they grew up. They were, uh, grew up together in this huge mansion um, as brother and sister. Now, obviously, they're fully aware that they were adopted. They know that they're not blood relatives, but for all intents purposes, they grew up together. They're brother and sister, and so when they were children, they had they received a type of a level of notoriety for being these crime fighting kids. So um, their abilities are, are known to to the world and like with family dynamics it's you know it could be one big thing or it could be several things that kind of break a family apart and so as they grew up they kind of dispersed and went their separate ways and lost touch and so the thing that brought them back together is their father dying and so they you know a lot of them you know some of them were angry and didn't really care they just wanted to come in and take care of you know his funeral and get and just go back to their lives while others kind of felt they was kind of suspicious that he died. And so they were like, did he die of natural causes? Was he murdered? We have to find, figure this out. And so, of course, them coming back together in this house is bringing up all these old issues that caused that, you know, drove, drove a wedge between them. 
when they were um, when they were younger. And so it seemed to be a huge issue between. So you find there's a huge issue between Diego and Tom. Um, while they all went on to where actually it was weird because Tom was actually living in outer space, like on Mars or something. It was it, that was really weird. I didn't really understand that part, but okay. But Diego, of of all the all of them, Diego, Diego was the one who kind of was still fighting a good fight. He was still out there at night, you know, doing what he can to protect people in the city. So, um, like I said, I'm trying to recall this from over a month ago. So uh, they come together in this house, and of course, it's bringing up all these issues. They, you know, talk to Klaus about trying to summon their father so that he, they could talk to him. And, of course, Klaus is like, I, you know, I don't want to talk to the man. He is really resentful and angry. And he's like, he just didn't want to do it. So, of course, that caused a problem. And then, you know, eventually they're, you know, sitting around and they're talking about number five. And there's a portrait of him. Apparently, number five went missing when they were children. And uh, they, nobody knows what happened to them. And so there has a flashback of them as children. And he wanted to, I guess, see what his powers could do. And, you know, he felt like he was being stifled and he was being held back. And, you know, he could be more than, you know, what he's been, you know, been allowed to do. And it's that third. So he goes out one day and he's like jumping and doing this whole thing. And eventually he jumps way into the future. I forget how many years far ahead in the future. And he's now stuck. So, of course, at this point, they don't know that for all that for. For them, he went. He left home one day and just never came back. So, you know, they eventually ends up end up in the courtyard, and then there's this whole fight between Tom and uh, Diego, and that's just the whole thing. And next, you know, this portal opens, and they're all like, "What the hell is going on? What?" You know, they're all kind of taking it back, and who what comes out of the portal? The um uh number five. But they're kind of taken aback because, as you can see in the photos, all the rest of them grew up there now adults in in in, in their timeline. But number five is still the same age that he was when he disappeared. And so they're like, "What? What the hell?" So that's why you see the difference in the photos. Why they're all grown up and he still looks like he's still a kid. Um. So he he uh tells them about how he he's very he was very very intelligent so how he reverse engineered something that he was able to send himself back but he had to send himself back at the, at the age he was when he disappeared and so there, he's he's trying to explain to them without telling them a whole lot because there is a whole lot going on that they don't know about because while he went to the future he now he's been privy to what's uh what's to come for them and so he has uh his mission is basically to try to figure out how to save them while telling them very little and so he's being very kind of elusive and it's you know it's causing a lot of friction between them because you know they're he's he's not being forthcoming they know something is up and he's not really talking to them and you know trying to convince him but you have to understand in his timeline he actually grew to be an old man in his timeline so he has all the life experience of a man who's like 60 or 70 years old, which is the age he reached, I think, maybe right, maybe 50 or 60. But he's now back in this child's body with all that life experience. And so, for all intents and purposes, he sees himself as older than them, which is kind of, which is funny. Which, I mean, I guess technically, I don't know, you know, the whole timeline thing, but he sees himself as older than them. So he doesn't really, really feel like he's beholden to them or he has to explain anything to them and you know he did have a rough time in the timeline that he lived and then you start finding out what he kind of got involved in uh the now this is where the league of legends comparison comes in so there's this group called i don't know if they're called the time masters but like they're in the league of legends but it's the same kind of organization where they kind of keep the time uh people from altering the timeline and so they hired him as a bounty hunter to kind of catch people who kind of tend mess with the timelines. And so that's basically what he did throughout his time and um, in the, in his, in the, in his timeline. So now he's escaped. And so he's trying to stay alive because of course he's now violated one of their cardinal rules. You don't, you can't tamper with the timeline uh, while trying to save humanity while not, 
kind of while leaving his siblings out of the frame because he feels like he's trying to protect he's protecting them even though he has he's like a little asshole but his whole thing is he's trying to protect them so let me get my sweater and get out here um so he then so oh and one of the uh bounty hunters actually played by mary j blige so i was like is that mary j like oh okay um she was get kicking ass and getting her ass kicked and it was a whole it's a whole um thing let me pause this here so i can get out of here Whew, so in the car now um so basically there were a lot of near misses and of course the you know the other other siblings started to kind of investigate what was going on with number five and they eventually found out and so the time people finally caught up with him and he made a deal or so they thought so he would go back and work for them and yeah but basically he would go back and work for them and then they would leave his family alone <coughs> but he i mean he went back to work for them but it was to get more information and so once they found out that you know he was making plans to hit the road again then here we go again they after him all over again and his family it's the whole thing and so while he's dealing with that you still have the other siblings dealing with their own issues so tom is coming to terms with um his feelings about their father like i said he was always a duty bound one he was always the one who was there even after went even after the other ones left he stayed and fought the good fight and um, he actually ended up being injured really bad and so his father ended up giving him this serum that basically turned him into it reminds you of if you've seen van helsing with hugh jackman and the guy that played dr jekyll and mr hyde i'm assuming mr hyde is the beast right so he it, he kind of looks like mr hyde he's like it, it, it was just it was um it did something really awful to his body but it saved his life and it actually made him i guess even stronger um and so they found this out when the agents attacked the house and uh one of the, the one of the agents ended up dropping a chandelier on him he gets up and it ripped his clothes so they were actually able to see all the scars and like how deformed his body had become after taking that serum and so they're all like oh my god like they didn't they, like I said, they had lost touch. They had no idea what was going on. They really don't have any idea what was going, what's going on with each other, really, at this point. Um, Allison, who um, is, she was, I don't know if she was married to the man, but she did have a kid. And she's going through a custody battle with him now because she did the unthinkable. Now, he knew that she had abilities, her uh, husband. But... You know they were having issues and you know she has this little girl adorable little girl and of course children are going to be children and so she was just you know she was tired one day and you know the daughter didn't want to go to sleep she kept you know that question 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 questions and then eventually she ends up using her powers on the daughter to make her go to bed and so when the husband saw that he became he was very pissed off very angry and i think that was like the straw that broke the camels back in their relationship so she's now dealing with the you know the, the, the fallout from that and you know all of the issues about her possibly losing her daughter um uh like i said klaus is, dealing, is struggling with his drug addiction and trying to come to terms with you know his upbringing and his resentment towards their father and the whole thing uh yeah goes he's very angry Again, another person who's dealing with, you know, their upbringing and the fall, whatever the fall. I can't remember the fallout, which you know, the thing that really the started road camp was back where that is. But he's very angry, and he's dealing with that. Vanya is like the odd one out who has always been. She's dealing with her feeling of kind of isolation. She's always been, the, like I said, the odd person out, the one without the powers. You know, she's on this medication. She is a wonderful violinist. She's actually in an orchestra, and she you know have students who she actually trains um and so she does have somewhat of a life but her life is very mundane and you can see that she's not very happy until one day this guy comes into her life and it's like from the time he comes into her life he's kind of suspect but you know as the story unfolds you realize that okay well at least that's what i thought and as the story unfolds, you know you kind of realize what what's what but 
Um, so they're all struggling to deal with their own issues along with trying to figure out what number five is up to while he's trying to keep them safe while keeping them out of the loop. It's just a whole lot of stuff. And so a lot of fight scenes, a lot of, you have explosions, a lot of blood and knives and a lot of, a lot of, a lot. And so, um, eventually... Vanya runs out of her medication and so the guy she's with is like why are you on this medication and she was basically trying to explain to her why she was taking the medication whole thing and so she stops taking the medication and then one day she got upset and then there was I don't remember if there was this explosion or like this pole bent or something and so now you're saying okay this is where her genius aspect comes in and if you remember in X-Files uh, uh, X Files, Lord X-Men that when Jean was a lot more powerful than she had been led to believe. They, because the professor felt that her power was, she was too powerful. And so he had to manage it in a way that kept her safe and everybody else safe. And so by him, him his way of managing it, managing it was to kind of block, they put up these walls in her mind. Like she, like, so she wouldn't really be able to connect to it or tap into it. Or, I, I can't remember the whole thing, but it's similar to that. So what you found is that this medication that she had been on had been keeping her controlled and you it flashed back to when she was a kid how she started playing the violin they gave her the violin as a way to channel her energy and so it was the medication and it was the you know the violin that kind of kept her in check and so she everybody just went through none of the nobody knew that she had uh powers but except the the, the um the father and Pogo, Pogo is the, the was the father's right hand man who reminds you of a beast. He's like a, a, a orangutan or something. I can't remember, but uh, yeah. So this starts happening, and now he's like all in her head. Now remember, she's gone through her whole life like being feeling isolated and alone, and then you have this guy who's coming into her life who claims to care about her. So let me. Okay, so I made it to work. Okay, so. <clears throat> Um, okay, so she is now, Vanya is now in a relationship with this guy who's all in her head, got her head all messed up. So eventually the other, the other, um, siblings find out that she has powers and it triggered a memory for Allison. Allison remembered that when she was a kid, um, that the, their father kind of convinced her to use her powers on Vanya. Much like how the professor, Professor Xavier, used um, his abilities on Jean to kind of, kind of block her access to her powers or make her forget, or it was basically it was all an attempt to control um, her powers because as powerful because when it came when it came down to it, she was actually more powerful than all of them, and so especially having that kind of power as a kid, you can kind of understand why he didn't want um want that to happen so she remembered she has this memory and then she finds uh, Vanya and she was basically telling her what she remembered now remember Allison was a kid too so she was just going off of what her father told her to do for whatever reason um this man had Vanya's uh Allison did I say Vanya I think Allison was a kid so she was going off what her father told her to do and but this man has but for Vanya, this man has her head so messed up and got her thinking that her family's all against her and they've been lying to her and that they're jealous of her and that they hate her and this whole kind of thing. So when Allison um, went to talk to her, Vanya lost it and it was basically felt like there was this conspiracy to to uh, like mistreat her or something, even though at the time they were all they were all children. And so she ends up going off and um knives start flying and she actually cut Allison's throat and it was only after that she realized what she had done now she's all panicked they're trying to figure out what to do and she ended up calling the other siblings they come and get um Allison and and um of course Tom is upset because at this point throughout the story you can see that they're that Tanya and Allison have feelings for each other um but given how they were raised, you know, they still, it's, it's a weird dynamic, you know, they know that they're not blood relatives, but they were raised as brother and sister, and so that's posing some issues, but they do have feelings for each other, so, of course, he's pissed, the other siblings are also pissed, because she lashed out at one of her own, and of course, you know, they're just now finding out that she has his power, so they don't really know the extent of her powers or what, and so they end up locking her in a room, um, but Allison, 
was trying to convince him to let her out like it's not her fault you know she didn't know we didn't know and so they're like well no because we really don't know where she stands right now because this is all new to us now um by all this is going on now like i said Al, um vanya is in an orchestra and i think she's like second chair and um they one of I think the first lady who's first chair she made some nasty comment to uh, to Vanya something I don't know and so Vanya was talking about it with the guy that she's dating and somehow eventually the this the woman ends up dead and so by uh, now Vanya is now been moved up to, I guess the first chair and so she's now has this recital that this um uh not recital I'm thinking of a kid but she's they have a performance that she's actually been preparing for so she it just happens to be that night so she has to um she's um uh, kind of dealing with the guilt of attacking um Vanya of uh, attacking Allison and then she ends up talking to Pogo and she asks Pogo if he knew and Pogo says yes and so she, it kind of sets her off so somehow she gets out I mean the house is about to fall to pieces she ends up leaving so now they're like okay they're now targeting trying to their initially goal was to kill her because you know they felt like okay once they figure out what was going to happen it's going to be this whole cataclysmic event and they're going to all end up dead they assumed that it was going to be um that Vanya was the call so now it's like I feel like it's coming full circle like she's going to be the responsible for all of us dying so we basically have to kill her to stop her from destroying the city da, da, da. so at this point Vanya is she's gone on to her um event but of course the agents are still hot on um number five's heels and Allison is out of commission because when she cut her throat Allison can't speak right now so she can't use her power so she can't really in that way help them um so she they all they all trying to get to, to trying to uh get themselves together to go to do battle with um Vanya and so it eventually comes out that the boy the guy that she's dating ended up killing this girl killing this woman so that she can move up it was this whole it was a whole his plan so he knew all about her which I, I can't like I said when they first met her he seemed suspect so it, it was just a whole mess so I think he ends up being killed I forget how he died though um uh, uh so they make it to the theater where she was going to be um performing um uh, of course the agents are hot on i'd hide on the heels uh mary j blige and her partner her partner is like he's been having second thoughts for a while he's been doing that for a while he met this woman who he's like falling in love with and he kind of wants to walk away but that's not the kind of job you can walk away from so he's kind of switched he's uh, he's more on the the guy the kids he uh, hell, he's trying to more trying to help them now because he wants to get out and just have a normal life with this woman and so he ends up trying to kill mary j blige i mean they're they're like speeding down the road trying to get to this theater and he slams so he has a seatbelt on but she doesn't he slams on the brake she goes flying through the damn windshield you think for sure she's dead but for whatever reason i don't know what these people are made of but she got her ass up and got into that theater and they start headache now they're doing battle and they of course have other agents there and it's this whole melee and then eventually so you still have klaus he's still talking to their dear brother but of course they they think okay he's just a junkie and he's hallucinating whatever and then eventually i don't know like his brother kind of stepped into him and so he was able to use his brother's power so at that point they were able to see their brother and so they were looking at like what the hell because now that he's able to use his powers and remember he has these tentacles that come out that attacks that like rips people to shreds so this is all going on through klaus but they can all they can see still see klaus but they can also see the brother and it's just this whole whole thing now the whole while vanya is on stage playing her violin you can see it like she's lit up like a damn christmas tree like her powers are just shooting all just all over the place like it's about to be this huge explosion right and so they're trying to get to her to kill her initially and so they eventually get to her and allison i forget what happened allison ends up shooting the glass and so her power goes out now around this time there's this meteor that's coming towards earth that that was actually the event that was going to that was that was going to kill um a bunch of people but um she shoots the glass and they call her power starts shooting out it actually destroys the um the um meteor but they're still trying to get this under control and so um uh number five he somehow found some way he to take them back in time to when they were children so they were still in their time but they kind of reverted back to when they were kids 
and even the uh, the brother that had died was there. Um, eventually, I forget how they get uh, what happened with Vanya. And eventually, she was. I don't know if they end up knocking her out or something, but they were all was all said done. They were all like back to being the kids that they were. You know, the, I guess a happier. I guess it must have been a happier time, and so. Um, that is basically how the episode ends. So I'm not exactly sure. That's from my knowledge. Again, like I said, it's been a couple of months since I've seen it. So I'm sure I, I glaze over a lot of stuff because, I mean, it was like 10 episodes. So I'm not going to remember every single thing that happened in every episode this far, you know, late, this um, far removed uh, from when I actually sat down to watch the episode. So feel free to leave any comments in the comment section. But yeah, it was a, a pretty good show, and like I said, I did make the comparison so that people who haven't seen it can have some under, have somewhat of an understanding of what the show is about. Um, I made the comparison between League of Legends and X Men, but it is a show that kind of it's, it's similar, but it does stand on its own. So it's a pretty good show. I can't wait for the season two to see you know what's going to happen, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to end this here, and I will talk to you guys later.